Couple tight ends, shove in motion out of the backfield to 4 1. It's Watson in the gun from his 25. First down and 10. Looks at a four man front. There's the shotgun snap. Three step drop throws. And the ball deflected in on the ricochet. It is intercepted. Picked off by Highsmith down the sideline. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. A pick six for the Steelers on the first play of the game. Watson under center from his own Cleveland 20. One run event. Receivers in tight. It's the snap. Four man rush. Second down nine from behind. Ball knocked away. Highsmith. It's picked up by what? From the 15 to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. Touchdown. Pittsburgh touchdown. What? On the fumble by Watson. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. I'm Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry, Jay Croucher. That sound you heard at the top of the show was the sweet, sweet cashing of Deshaun Watson to throw an interception. Did not have to wait very long. Deshaun Watson's trade going well. Matthew, going very well. Um, Deshaun Watson trade? Yeah, three first rounders. <laughs> $250 oh, that million. For, oh, for the bronze. I thought you meant for me. I'm like, I own no shares of Deshaun Watson. I'm like, I was trying to go through all my legs. Like, do I, did I do a dumb trade for Deshaun Watson? I'm like, oh, no, I did mm. not. Just the Cleveland I'm Browns unlike, did. The Cleveland I'm unlike Browns. the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, in fairness to the Cleveland Browns, they only have, I believe, another $200 million to left to pay him. Cap hits, uh, I think, $64 million for three of those years. Nothing. It's fine. It's, fine. it's no big deal. It's yeah. been great. This joke has been done countless times over, but uh, Baker Mayfield looks a lot better than Deshaun Watson right now, doesn't he, Connor? I would say so. Yeah. It's looking so, that way. By the way, so does Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know? And he doesn't even have to play to do that. No, I know. I'm so Commander Sam Howell. Commanders, commanders don't need him because Sam Howell's on the, his way to the Hall of Fame. Um, uh, all right. So, um, today's it. Today's a sad day. Today's a sad day. I mean, I want to be, listen, here's the thing. Like, I want to be upbeat because it's a show, right? It's a show. It's show business. And, like, I'm, I'm, getting, like nothing from, I'm getting nothing from these two lugs. <laughs> so, like, I feel like I always have to, like, be upbeat and happy and, you know, bring the, bring, bring not only the noise but also the funk. Bring the happy. This is what I do. Um, but if I can go to, the, go to the main shot here. Thank you, Trisha. I just, today sucks. Today sucks. It really, it, it does Nick Chubb drinks free. I yep. just, honestly, today sucks. Um, Nick Chubb, I've interviewed him before. Awesome human being. I mean, again, to the extent you can meet somebody, you know, but, like, you get a sense of players. You've been, I've interviewed a ton of NFL players over the years, and, like, you sort of get a sense of, like, who's sort of phony and who's kind of real. And Nick Chubb, I thought, very real. Um, and by, by all accounts, awesome human being, awesome teammate. One of, if not the best pure runner in the NFL. And... I mean, I feel like we just have to start there, Connor. Yeah, we like, do. like to me, that's the bi- that's the biggest story. It's uh, it's the biggest story in fantasy, and it just it just sucks. It does for a guy that had a devastating injury in college, worked so hard to come back from that injury. A lot of people didn't even think he would have a long NFL career after that injury. And not only has he had a successful NFL career, he's been one of the best running backs you could say that we've seen over the last decade, just in terms of what he could do on a game by game basis, Jay. And to watch that happen, as you see the Steelers fans obviously stand up and applaud Nick Chubb, the respect there is very real. It, there is no other way to put it. It sucks to see that happen to one of the NFL's good guys that has an incredible comeback story, and now we're rooting for him to have another one. Yeah, we're gonna talk. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Micah Parsons later in the show, and just it's and with Parsons right now, it's just such a joy watching that guy play football at the level that he is. And with Nick Chubb, it's the same thing. And the sad thing is, is that he's having an incredible game before yeah. the injury, and he was reminding everyone why he is the best pure runner in football. And, and now we don't get to see him for quite a while. Yeah, so that's the, yeah. Go ahead, Barry. I'm going to say, I think, I think everyone, when they saw the injury or just like, you know, when you see the cart coming out, yeah. like, you know, and, and Stefanski said, uh, you know, after the, um, uh, after the game, that it's a serious knee injury and he, he's done for the year. He's out for the year. I, I hope that like we see him play football again. Like yeah. I, I would highly recommend do not look up video or, uh, f- you know, right. or photos of it. Um, There's a reason they didn't reach, they didn't show the replay and good on yeah. them for not you know, showing that correct correct 
Um, but the unfortunate part of our job, uh, guys, is, so anyway, we're hoping, you know, desperately we see Nick Chubb back on the football field sooner rather than later. It's not going to be this season. But uh, the unfortunate part of our job is that when there is news in the NFL, even if it's really unfortunate news, is that there is a fantasy impact to that. We are a fantasy football show. So Nick Chubb, um, when he leaves the game, it's the Jerome Ford show. You know, we saw a little bit of Pierre Strong there, but that's because Jerome Ford had ripped off like this 70-yard run and he was like, you know, a little bit gassed. But ultimately it becomes... uh, uh, the Jerome Ford, after Nick Chubb left the game, he handled 66% of the snaps. He handled 89% of the running back carries for Cleveland. His second longest rush through two weeks of the season was that 69-yard run. So, I mean, there's some big playability to Jerome Ford. He was somebody that part of the reason why they felt comfortable letting Kareem Hunt go in the offseason was because of the confidence they have in Jerome Ford, guys. Yeah, absolutely. And look, he's not going to replace Nick Chubb because Nick Chubb is such a dominant runner, but that is a really strong offensive line in Cleveland. I think they're going to have to run the ball. We'll talk about the Sean Watson. It's a little bit of a concern, I guess, that outside of that run, he wasn't that efficient, but I think you can chalk that up to just being an outlier. I think that he will be an efficient runner going forward, and uh, yeah, he's going to be everyone's number one waiver wide pickup. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll talk about we'll exactly. We're going to get, yep. we're going to get there to we'll get there to waivers as well, but. Um, Connor, for people that might be unfamiliar with Jerome Ford's game, other than what they may have seen last night, what do the Browns have now in their new starting running back? A home run hitter, and that's what he is. He has speed. He has the most speed in this backfield, and we got to see it right away. I mean, honestly, Jay, I think that's kind of who he is. He's going to hit the big one, but he's going to hit the big one often. And then there's going to be a lot of plays, too, that are dead plays. So for Jerome Ford, I think the most important thing, and he's an interesting player. I mean, he was a big-time running back at Alabama that transferred to Cincinnati and found the most success at Cincinnati when the Bearcats program was rolling, gets drafted by the Browns, and now he's kind of shown to be a viable pass catcher as well. So if you're a home run hitter in terms of that outside zone offense they run, combine the fact that you can maybe chip in three to five catches a game, Jerome Ford is going to be an impactful player. And you can hear that from Kevin Stefanski after the game that not only touched on the unfortunate Nick Chubb injury, but that Jerome Ford is ready to be this team's running back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a team game. Nobody's bigger than the team. Uh, You know, I don't say that to to discount the person, the player, the teammate that Nick Chubb is and, and what he means to this organization. I'm not discounting that. Uh, but this is a team game. It's the greatest team game there is. Uh, so we got to rally, and, and we'll rally without Nick. He'll be in the building, I'm sure, when, he, when he's back in, um, and, we'll, and he'll support his team just like we're going to support him. Jerome, as we've told you guys all along, he he's, uh, studies hard, knows what to do, runs hard. Uh, you know, there's a reason. You know, we like him. There's a reason he's, he's a big part of what we do, and obviously his role will increase, and I think he's ready for that. So here's Stefanski's confidence in Jerome Ford. And, guys, it felt like after the injury last night, a lot of the talk turned to, did they bring back Kareem Hunt? Yeah, and you know what? And not, not, they likely will add some depth. And so maybe it's Kareem Hunt. Maybe it's Leonard Fournette. Fournette. There's other guys out there. I'm sure they'll cook the tires on. They didn't use Kareem Hunt last year. They didn't look I mean, very good. They, they, like, they, they actively let him go. They didn't, they didn't like, make him a low ball offer. Or, like, or, like, they were just like, we're good. See ya. He here's, also- here's, here's, here's a t-shirt to remember your time here. But I mean, like, honestly, like, I, I get the compare. And, like, sure, anything, you know, things have changed. But they were very comfortable letting Kareem Hunt walk out the door in this offseason because of the confidence they had in Jerome Ford. And, by the way, like, Kareem Hunt wasn't good last year for the Browns. That's the thing. That's the thing. It's not like a Rashad Penny thing where every time he's on the field, he looks excellent. And Kareem Hunt wasn't as explosive. He wasn't as impactful last season. I will say there, like, there were just a lot of running backs kind of around at the moment. The Cam Akers trade request, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, this team, this Cleveland team, for better or worse, is built to win right now. Yeah. So I don't think they're just going to let this season uh, waste away. I, I, I will say that, like, I mean, you know, hey, uh, you know, Cam Akers could probably be had for like, you know, a, a bucket of balls and a, you know, a Cleveland Browns uh, sweatshirt. Um, there is Cream Hunt, Leonard Fournette is about out there. Do they suddenly get into the Jonathan Taylor sweepstakes? You know, I mean, like, I'm just asking, right? You know, I mean, like, so to your point, this is a team that is all in for this year. So we'll remains to be seen, but we'll talk about Jerome Ford very quickly because I want to move on here. Um, but Deshaun Watson, yeah looked bad he's QB 27 on the week here's my take on on a Watson and I don't think this is worth noting about Ford too by the way here's the next four games for the Cleveland Browns 
home to Tennessee, very tough run defense, home to Baltimore, home to San Francisco at Indianapolis. All of them through the first two weeks of the season have been top seven run defenses, but Tennessee is very much a pass funnel defense. Ravens, Ravens and Niners are good pass defense. They're just good overall defenses. I think this is, if I had Deshaun Watson, and I luckily do not, uh, and if you guys do have him on your team, you didn't listen to me, it's your own fault. But, all right, I'm here to help. This is what I would do if I had Deshaun Watson. Wait one more week, because I think he has a good game against Tennessee. Yep. They'll ha it'll be their first week without Nick Chubb. It's really hard to run against the Titans. Uh, so I think they'll actually have a good game. I think Watson will have a good game, at least a good statistical game against the Titans. And then I am sell, sell, selling for anything I can get. He's back. Look, you know, like no Nick Chubb. He's going to have to throw more. Look at the game that he had against Tennessee, blah, blah, blah. I would take him for, you know, 50 cents on the dollar. I would just try to sell whatever I could because I just, I, I have no confidence that he is going to turn it around. I mean, like, I suppose anything's possible, but we've, we've now got a seven game sample size of him uh, as a Cleveland Browns quarterback. And on a points per game basis, he's QB 19 since the start of last year. He's had under 20 fantasy points in six of eight games with the Browns. Uh, he's getting you some points with his legs. He's had at least 20 rushing yards in every game for the Browns, which is good. But like, I, I, like nothing in nothing I saw last. I mean, like worst throw of the night, right, right. there. What Look at that? that. A horrible throw. Yeah, it just. I, I don't know, guys. Like, am I am I being too harsh on him? No. No, the reality is is that if his name wasn't Deshaun Watson and he didn't have his contract, he'd be getting benched right now on the basis of what he's shown in these seven games. Obviously, that's not going to happen because of the investment in him. I will say last night, like, there were some flashes. There were some nice throws. He's a couple of toe taps from Elijah Moore away from having a better line. But at the same time, like, he just doesn't look right. He's not feeling pressure. He's executing these terrible throws like the one uh, into double coverage, which wasn't even close to Marquise Goodwin. And he's just playing like... To me, he kind of looks like a slightly worse version of Russell Wilson last year, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, but by the way, you, you're like, and we, we need to move on, but like, because we're going to get to waivers. We're going to get to waivers quickly. But the last thing I'll just say here on Watson is, um, yes, he had a couple of nice throws. But you know who else had a couple of nice throws this weekend? Like Josh Dobbs. Yeah. yeah. Like, seriously. Josh like Josh Dobbs has played better than yeah, the Sean a thousand, Watson. A thousand percent. Like, I, I mean, like, like, all jokes aside, like, you know, whatever. Um, uh, CJ Stroud had more nice throws, right? I mean, just again, again like, I don't know. Garoppolo had some nice throws. I, 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 no thank you on Deshaun Watson. That's, but that's what I would do because right now you, you won't get anything for him. I do think he'll have a decent game against Tennessee this week, and then whatever I can get for him, I'm selling. On top and of you the, need to hit the waiver wire for a quarterback. We've got some suggestions for you. We do up. have that coming up in segment two. Uh, on, you know, just away from the play, on top of all of that, Mike Florio from NBC, of course, at Pro Football Talk, tweeted on the possibility of Deshaun Watson's two blatant face mask fouls and his shove of an official possibly resulting in a suspension. A source told him this, all plays will be evaluated and assessed today. So we'll keep an eye on where the situation goes. He did make contact with an official. Nothing happened with it in the game. We'll see if anything happens outside of the game. Uh, one more note on the Browns offense. Amari I wonder Cooper. if they're secretly rooting for him to get suspended. I wonder if Stefanski is secretly rooting for uh, him to know. get suspended. DTR time. All DTR. DTR. All had, it was the summer of DTR. The DTR looked great. Like, it's they awesome. can move the ball with DTR. Yeah, so, anyway, interesting. we'll see. Amari Cooper ends up playing a bit of a surprise after, um, you know, not a lot of optimism there. He ends up playing, has seven catches on 10 targets for 90 yards. But I think the bigger story from the wide receivers was on the Steelers' side, where George Pickens only caught four of his 10 targets, but it was for 127 yards and a touchdown, Barry, and he had one of the most explosive plays we've seen from this offense in quite some time. Yeah, and I know everyone's dumping on Kenny Pickett, but whatever, they played the Browns and the Niners the first two games. Like, I'm not ready to bail on on uh, on on Kenny Pickett or the Steelers' offense. I'm a little nervous about Pat Fryermuth. It's been a very slow start to him. But, uh, yeah, this is this is what Pickens is. It was good to see kind of like, hey, we, we got the news before the game that Deontay Johnson officially placed on IR. He's going to miss – at least the next three games. So he, I assume game last night counted as one of the games. That's why they made the move just before the game. But so he'll miss at least the next three games. Uh, so it, it will be the George Pickens show. I, again, it's, I think this is such a tough game to really, you know, make any, you know, real analysis from because of the defense. But, you know, his 94% route participation led the team. Career high in receiving yards in a single game. 34.5% target share, to your point, and like just, you know, an unbelievable highlight worthy catch. 
He's George Pickens, the reason yeah. we like him. Yeah. I'm Wide receiver say, three with upside moving forward. This is a very weird game. I think I might be ready to bail on Kenny Pickett, to be honest. He looks terrible through the first two weeks. And Deshaun Watson was bad last night. Kenny Pickett, I think, was worse. Kenny Pickett had a 12 QBR, narrowly edged by Deshaun Watson's 16 QBR. It's a scale of 0 to 100, by the way. Look, the Steelers, they only had 24 minutes in terms of time of possession. They only ran 53 plays. They didn't really get out there. I do think Calvin Austin is kind of interesting, and we might talk about him, but he's seeing a lot of snaps. He's kind of replacing Deontay Johnson on the outside, but uh, this offense looks broken at the moment. I, I, I'm not... The only thing I might say to the... the and Kenny Pickett's only rostered in very deep leagues, two yeah. quarterback leagues, whatever, but... Can I change your mind if I tell you this? Here's their upcoming schedule. At Las Vegas, on Sunday Night Football right here on NBC, and Peacock, let's go! The Kenny Pickett redemption happened Sunday night. Uh, then home to Houston. Okay. So, two games, I mean, again, Niners-Browns, now Vegas and Houston. Yeah, potentially. I think that, I mean, the problem is, is that even when he's not under pressure, he's just missing wide open guys. Uh, but he has time and he's young. Feels like right. he doesn't trust that offensive line. Yeah, he's yeah. really working through it. Now, obviously, their backfield is getting more interesting, too, by the day, because Najee Harris, besides the two big runs towards the end of the game, not a great night for Najee yeah. Harris. He ends up with 10 carries, 43 yards, only one catch didn't result in any yards. Jalen Warren ultimately has four catches for 66 yards. It is safe to say Jalen Warren is making the most of his touches while it feels like right now, Jay, Najee Harris is not. I'll tell you what, if Najee Harris doesn't have those two 20-yard runs, yeah. uh, they, I think the start of the fourth great, quarter, then still. all of a sudden I think that Jalen Warren might be the starter. Uh, but just with what he gives you in the receiving game, he just looks more explosive. He, does. he just looks like he's running downhill a lot more than Najee Harris. So I wouldn't be surprised, Matthew, if that flips at some point and Jalen Warren's the guy. Well, he had, the only thing you're counting on Najee Harris is you're hoping he falls into the end zone because he's getting no passing game usage here. He got one reception for zero yards in this. Meanwhile, to your point, Jalen Warren, four for 66 in the passing game, 20% target share in week two. Uh, he's had six targets in both games this season. Like one of the things that kind of kept Najee Harris afloat, you know, when he came into the league was Ben just couldn't throw and he would just dump off to Najee Harris. That's not the case so far. Since the start of last season, Najee Harris has two games, literally only two games with 16 or more fantasy points. For a guy that was drafted as a, you know, as a number two running back in fantasy, and I know he dropped towards the end, and I know, like, you got him in the sixth round in our league, but, like, in all seriousness, how are you feeling about him sixth round Najee Harris right now, two games in? Feeling terrible, because not yeah. only does he look bad, but the offensive line, like, they just had no chance. They're running right. up the gut with Najee Harris. like, all right, well, hopefully he doesn't get tackled for a loss. Like, that's Second basically what we're going for. Yeah, it's right. not, not looking good. Again, Vegas and Houston the next two, then, then the Ravens and the Rams. So, but, like, the next two, I think they can get – Hopefully the Steelers, the entire Steelers offense can get on track. But yes, this is why we said in the preseason we prefer Jalen Warren at cost to yeah. Najee Harris. And Jalen Warren, who is not 100% rostered, yeah. um, you know, so just he's, he's well over 50%. But if for some reason he's somehow available in your league, you try to go get him. So we did have a second game last night. This was a Monday night football doubleheader. Technically. We technically, technically had a second game. The Saints beat the Panthers 20-17. to 17. Listen, guys, <laughs> the story from a fantasy perspective in this game was Taysom Hill, yeah. nine carries, 75 yards. Uh, he also threw one pass for eight yards, classic Taysom Hill stat line. Tony Jones Jr. falls into the end zone twice. So, wow. Penn yeah, State on the table. no, because you know what? Some of us, some of us had Jamal Williams in a lot of leagues. Some of us suffered through week one when he played Tennessee, but that's okay. It's another week. Now they're playing Carolina, who got run all over in week number one. Jamal Williams is going to get finally a um, a big workload here. We have we, Jamal Williams is going to be a superstar for at least the first three weeks. No Kendra Miller, no Alvin Kamara. Some people, and by some people, I mean me, needed Jamal Williams to score a touchdown. I put it out of my Monday Night Miracle. I needed Jamal Williams here to win a game. And did I get it? No, I did not. Because Tony Jones gets two one-yard carries. Those should have been Jamal Williams. But they weren't. They weren't, Jay. Jamal Williams, who had 18 rushing touchdowns last year, gets zero on this night. Gets zero in week one. Everything sucks. It's all horrible. I had no fun last night. Yeah, well, at least he went 9 for 29 uh, with 3.2 uh, yeah. yards per carry average before he got yeah. hurt uh, with no receptions, uh, no targets, and no touchdowns. Uh, I think Taysom Hill is going to be a thing, though. I think they're going to have to use him. That offense just hasn't yeah. really clicked yet. Also, Michael That's Thomas, by the way, who was yes. on his way to a massive game and still went 7 for 55, he's going to be a part of that offense. He is, as long as he's healthy. Uh, props to you on that.
Yeah, I mean, again, we'll get into Tony Jones and Taysom Hill. We'll see how long uh, uh, Jamal Williams is going to be out. We'll track that throughout the week. But it feels like Kendry Miller was close to returning, and then we've only got one game till Kamara comes back. So this backfield is a mess on an offense that, you know, Running wise, semi putrid last night. Yes. Again, like semi putrid. Semi semi putrid. Um, but yeah, I mean, like Chris Olave did Chris Olave things, and uh, you know, and Rashid Shahid, like it's a thing. I, is, yeah. a, is is a thing. Like your your sleeper Rashid Shahid, and yes, your beloved Michael Thomas, my best friend, well, my soulmate. Yeah. Somebody at this desk, uh, Jamal Williams, almost got somebody at this desk chopped in the guillotine league in week two. I know. I know. George Pickens <laughs> lifted me up and yes. kept me alive by about two points. Yeah, you so. should be wearing a Pickens. You know how embarrassing it would have been if I got chopped in the guillotine league week two. I know. It would have been brutal. Luckily, yeah. it was DJ Short. DJ Short. <laughs> <laughs> DJ not Short, tonight, no. our yeah, beloved colleague a, here, uh, uh, you know, does a lot of baseball writing for us over at Roto World. Uh, you can pay uh, less also, attention to football. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can pay less attention to football. You can pay yes. less attention focus to football. You can focus on preseason another, another baseball another because, yeah. um, yes. because I don't know who's going to win the guillotine league. Uh, I just know who is not, and the answer is DJ Short. Oh, man. DJ Short is done. He is dead. He is cut. He is cut forever. <laughs> that is the brilliance of the guillotine league. Um, yeah, you. it was looking dicey for it was you scary. for quite a The chat uh, started actually yeah. steamrolling me, and then I survived. So. If you also had uh, any shares of the Panthers' backfield in the Gia Team League, I'm not sure they helped you a lot here either. Chuba Hubbard does end up with five catches for 34 yards. Now, a lot of this was in garbage time when the Panthers were trailing in the fourth quarter. Chuba Hubbard played 57% of the snaps when that was going on. But Miles Sanders, 14 carries, sounds great. Only 43 yards, three catches, only four yards. Guys, this Panthers supporting cast for Bryce Young is not good. It's brutal. And Miles Sanders, at least, he did get, well, he didn't do much with him, but he got five targets after getting six targets last week. So I think he is going to be used in the passing game. Also, just quietly, Jonathan Mingo had eight targets, and he's only three at 26, but he is playing a ton of snaps, and he's being used uh, in the offense, and I think that he could be a breakout candidate later in the year. Yeah, uh, there, there's no, I mean, like, again, Adam Thielen had a nice, had a, had a nice game here is statistically, um, but to your point about Miles Sanders, he's got the second largest tar target share on the team so far through two games, like over 17%. That was one of the questions. Would Sanders be used in the passing game so far? Uh, when the trailer Panthers were trailing, though, Chuba Hubbard played 57% of the snaps. Like, a lot of his stuff came in the two-minute warning. Like, uh, so he, he racked up a lot of, like, kind of, but I think the Panthers are going to be trailing in a lot of games. So um, And they can't throw down the field. And they can't throw down the field. It does feel like um, in deeper leagues, Chuba Hubbard will be something. And given Miles Sanders' injury history is somebody that, like, in deeper leagues needs to be rostered probably more. Yep. We're going to take our first break. When we're back, it's waiver wired. We're getting you help wherever you need it. Quarterback, running back, tight ends, wide receivers right after this. Pass interference for sure. Oh. But the pass interference against Curtis Samuel last year was this. The hold. Before yeah, the ball came like in. That's okay, like, like, it was like massively, like, the, yeah. the other one, had the other one been called, the one against the Commanders um, this week, absolutely, 100%, would have been a legit call. I wouldn't have been like, ah, come on. Yeah. But it was, it's also the kind of thing that gets not called a lot. For everyone on Twitter that was yelling at me, saying like, hey, Barry, you're going to have the same kind of energy. The answer is no, because I'm a homer, <laughs> damn it. I'm a Washington Commanders homer, and we're 2-0 for the first time since 2011. Yeah. So I don't want to hear it. Good imitation of uh, press man coverage on Connor Yeah, Rogers you still got your well. dad strength. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Thank it's you, It's good. You haven't lost the dad strength yet. It's, it's good to see, Barry. The clip cut out the best part, me manhandling you. <laughs> it was, it was kind of there. It was there. It was... It's like an Australian rules football tackle. Yes. Get you out there for my calling the Magpies this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, the Magpies could use me. That's yeah, yeah they could. That's true. Against Greater Western Sydney. Yeah, yeah exactly. Game. Preliminary final. I'm, 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 uh, I'm taking Sydney and giving the points. <laughs> okay, yeah, 10 and a half. There you go. Is that what it is? Yeah, the yeah, line plus is 10, 10 and a half. half. Yeah. The fact that you know. <laughs> That's <laughs> too quick. The, the fact that you know off the top of your head what uh, the line is the sick, for uh, the uh, Australian rules football. It's the football. sickness that does it. Yes. Yeah. You are de you are degenerate of degenerates. Uh, right. I thought I was a degenerate, and then I met you, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm normal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. You are. Yeah. Yeah. No one's got the sickness quite like me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, waiver wired running backs. Let's jump into it. Listen, we touched on this at, top, at the top. The unfortunate injury to Nick Chubb obviously opens the door for Jerome Ford to be a massive producer for the Browns offense. As you see the top running back injuries here, Nick Chubb. Uh, is out for the season with the knee injury. Saquon Barkley with the ankle injury expected to miss three weeks. That was news that came out after yesterday's right. show. Like, 
So, yeah. So, not the worst, not the best. And they have a quick week, quick turnaround. David Montgomery, that one is the uh, least clear. Yeah. He has the thigh contusion, and he's expected to miss a couple weeks, but we've also heard the coach say day to day. Well, here's well, the thing no, is that yeah. the couple weeks is like a throwaway comment from David Montgomery. Yeah. He's not making like a scientific assessment. He could be up a couple weeks. He could play this week. He could be out a month. No like, we just don't really know. Right. So, yeah, that's the thing is, is that Adam Schefter put out a tweet that said, in essence, basically, David Montgomery says it's going to take him a couple weeks to get over this. But that doesn't mean, like, he can't play through it. it you know what I mean? It doesn't he's mean he's going to be out for – he's a very tough dude. It, you know what I mean? Like, again, uh, like, it's going to take me a couple weeks to get over Jamal Williams last night, but I'm still going to be here tomorrow. It's basically like, like if you have, like, a sinus infection, you'd be like, oh, I'll be right in a few days. So, well, you don't really have any idea. Yeah. Right. Just throwing out of it. So, it just, like, caution there on Dave Montgomery. So, like, it wouldn't surprise me if he does, in fact, miss a few games – it also wouldn't surprise me if he gets 20 carries yeah. on Sunday for the Lions. So let's go back to Jerome Ford. Not clear. Available yeah. in 84% of leagues. Uh, upcoming schedule, really brutal. You brought it up earlier, Barry. The Titans, the Ravens, they have the bye week and then the 49ers. But obviously, Ford comes in for Nick Chubb, goes for over 100 yards, catches three passes for 25 yards, and gets the touchdown. I mean, he's obviously going to be the top dog on waivers this week. He is, but, uh, you know, again, and, right, he played 49% of the snaps last night. He finishes the sixth best running back in fantasy in week number two. Averaged 6.6 .6 yards per carry, third highest among running backs. Obviously, that 69-yard run, greatly inflating that. But it's a run-heavy team. It's a team that's built to run. It's a team with a good offensive line. The job is seemingly his. I'm not really worried about Pierre Strong. And the feeling is that unless they traded for Jonathan Taylor, and I have not heard that rumor at all. I'm literally throwing that out, no. you know, just – that's a guy that's unhappy and they need a running back. But um, uh, but beyond that, so I'm throwing that out and who knows whether they would trade Taylor within the AFC anyway. Uh, but he's likely to be the guy. That said, it is some tough matchups coming up. Uh, but, like, you know, and yes, could they bring back Kareem Hunt? Could they, like, my expectation here is that he's going to, he's going to get 65 to 70% of the Browns running back touches for the rest of the season. And so this is number one waiver claim. This is 85% of your fab, maybe even 90%. Like this is a, you know, this is when you go all in for. Yep. And I mean, you'd write the other guy who got injured is Saquon Barkley. You'd probably rather just have Jerome Ford for the rest of the season than Saquon Barkley, given that you're getting an extra three weeks. I think you might be able to trade for Jerome Ford just because I don't think people fully appreciate that he's going to get a heavy workload behind an awesome offensive line with a very suspect quarterback at the moment. So yeah, I think this is this the is fact the big that one. the the fact that he you know he he's involved in the passing game. Yep. He caught three balls on Monday night as well. Is that again? So even though. You don't love the Tennessee matchup or the Ravens matchup. You know, the schedule doesn't favor him, but they'll still find ways to get him the ball. I mean, again, because Watson is not scared to, uh, to dump it off. Um, so, you, to me, Jerome Ford is the clear cut number one. He's the number one running back, obviously. He's the number one waiver pick of everyone this week, assuming, like, you know, Puka Nakua is not available in your league, you know. He's not 100% rostered, which is shocking to me. He's the number three player in fantasy today behind Tyreek Hill and the Dallas defense. No, I know. I mean, yeah. Genuinely. Gonna, I mean, it's insane to me. I mean, but he's he's rostered in almost every league, but, you know, whatever. You, you look there in Yahoo and you're like, whatever, 87% yeah. or whatever it is, and you're like, eh, you never know. Um, we showed before Saquon yeah. Barkley. He's expected to miss three weeks with the ankle injury, which did not look good. Body language didn't look good. And the Giants now will lean on Matt Breida, who's available in 98% of leagues. Gary Brightwell, 100% available. <laughs> that would shock CJ that Gary Brightwell is just My out man, there. And Gary everyone. Brightwell, Gary B. Uh, upcoming schedule, not good for Thursday Night Football, the 49ers. Then they have Seattle. They travel to Miami. And then they play Buffalo, of course, on Sunday Night Football here on NBC and Peacock. Barry, how does this one shake out? Yeah, I mean, I, listen, if you're asking me, I'm, I'm going to pick Brita over Brightwell, right? Brightwell's had one career game with over eight touches, right? You know, and like, you know, week 17 and 18 last year, Brita averaged, you know, double-digit touches, over 53 yards from scrimmage in week 17 to 18. Meanwhile, Brightwell in week 18 last year, 12 for 63. I think it's going to be a committee. I think the runner on the Giants that you're going to want is actually Daniel Jones. I actually think there's a chance he leads this team in rushing yards because uh, I think there'll be a committee. You don't love the schedule there. Also, by the way, Seattle, you don't mind Seattle, but just in case Barkley misses more than three games, right? So Niners this week, I don't want to touch any of these guys. Let's see how it sort of plays out. Then you got Seattle. Okay, fine. 
but then they're at Miami and at Buffalo. And you feel like both those games could easily get out of – I mean, those, those are two really good offenses yep. that the Giants could be trailing and not really running the ball effectively. This is part of the reasons why I like Breed a little bit more than Brightwell. I think he'll be more involved in the passing game. But I feel like this is a situation ideally to avoid. Yeah, and for context, the Niners are 10.5 point favorites at home on Thursday night. The total is 45, so expecting like a 28-17 type of game. And if your Giants are going to score 17 points, it's pretty hard to find value for any running back. You, I, know, I yeah. kind of, I don't know, just 10 and a half is a lot. You like the Giants. I just, that feels like a backdoor, that feels like an ugly backdoor cover. That the Giants just like get Not some, like the Niners dominate the whole time, but just the Giants sort of hanging around and then just all of a sudden like, yeah, it's uh, it's 28-17 and they just like, they kick, they kick a field goal or they do something. They pull a Rams. Yeah, they just, yeah. I just, that feels, I, I'm just telling you, that just, I don't think I'm betting that game, but yeah. that, Feels like a backdoor cover. Not that as, feels like an ugly Giants backdoor cover. To Niners me. weren't great against the Rams, and that defense does. I think back to the Jarrett Stidham game uh, against Vegas last year, where sometimes they just don't show up in uh, in spots where they know that they can win with these. So yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. We yeah. talked about the uh, lack of clarity on David Montgomery's timeline with that quad contusion there, and you know you look at their backfield, the depth of it. Of course, Jameer Gibbs is involved, but somebody still has to take on carries if Montgomery's out. Lions running back Craig Reynolds is 100% available. Detroit has Bam Knight now, I believe, on the active roster. Yep. Yep. Um, their upcoming schedule, Atlanta at Green Bay on Thursday Night Football, Carolina and Tampa Bay. Craig Reynolds, only three carries for seven yards in week two against Seattle. Yeah, but after Montgomery left the right. team, uh, left, the, left the game, he played 41% of the snaps. So, again, this is, I think, to me, the only way I'm rostering Craig Reynolds is if I have David Montgomery. Like, okay, good, because I do, listen, I know I saw the Bam Knight thing, and certainly they'll increase the usage on Jameer Gibbs, but I don't think that Jameer Gibbs has suddenly become a 20-touch guy. Like, they no. don't want him in that role. And Craig Reynolds has been there. They like him in the system. Like, he is he is kind of, again, like, a little bit like Dave Montgomery, a little bit like Dan Campbell, like, you know, rough and tumble, you know, black and blue. I'm a football player. I'm a football guy. You very know, it's very like, 1940s name. It is. Uh, 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 yeah. Craig Reynolds. But he is. Like, he is a, a lunch is. pail guy, you know, like, it's whatever. All the cliches, all the bad. Yeah. You're, uh, 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 I'm going off to work. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I'm just. Hard you know, hat Craig yeah, Reynolds. Exactly. <laughs> but a little bit, a yeah. little bit. I mean, yes. no, it's like, especially by the way, if you Very know Craig Reynolds' story, seconds. if you know Craig Reynolds' story to the NFL, like it's not like this guy was a hard, you know, high draft pick or anything like that. This kid earned like every single snap he's ever gotten, and so uh, I know they like him internally there. Uh, my expectation would be that if Montgomery misses the game against the Falcons this week, it would be Reynolds and Gibbs with a few more, t you know, so maybe like 15 each kind of thing, as opposed to like the 18, 13 yeah. that we've sort of, but. Um, so Reynolds, but again, I wouldn't feel great about starting him. Like again, and there's a chance that Montgomery plays, so I wouldn't use a high waiver pick tonight on him. But if I had Montgomery, I wouldn't mind grabbing him and stashing him, so that you know you had the the lot. Whoever the lead running back for the Lions is should have success against Atlanta on Sunday. Yep. Though I'd be much more interested in the next guy on our list, and that's Zach Moss, yes, sir. who played in 98% of snaps in Week 2. That seems high, uh, considering that uh, I think the leader in Week 1 was Christian McCaffrey, who played 85% of snaps. So, Zach Moss, it looks like, you know, for all the rumors of Deion Jackson in the preseason, it's going to be Zach Moss's backfield until Jonathan Taylor's back. By the way, and it might be longer. Again, like, there's no... There's no guarantee in week five Jonathan Taylor suits up for the Colts. There is bad blood on both sides of that. Uh, I heard a rumor last night that there's still at least one NFL team trying to get Jonathan Taylor. Like, that, like again, I don't know, you know, I don't know how accurate that is, but the fact is, is like, there's a non-zero chance that Jonathan Taylor gets traded at some point, you know, when he comes off the IR um, or that they just, that they healthy scratch him the way that, because it's just, they don't, you know, like, yeah, um, so... Uh, there's a chance that Zach Moss is is the guy the rest of the season. He's certainly going to be a guy for the next two weeks, especially, by the way, Anthony Richardson officially in the concussion protocol. So we don't know his status for Sunday. If Gardner Minshew suits up for the Colts on Sunday, you would expect them all the rushing to go to Zach Moss, as opposed to if Richardson's back there, they'd split some. Yep. Over in the Ravens' backfield, Justice Hill available in 56% of leagues. They have the Colts this weekend, and they're at Browns, at Steelers, and against Tennessee in London. Uh, week two at Cincinnati, Justice Hill at 11 carries, 41 yards, three catches, 12 yards. Of course, Jay still splitting the workload with the Gus Bus, Gus Edwards. Yeah, and it was a very even split as well. 11 carries for Hill, 10 for Edwards. Both, if we're just back where we were last year with the yeah. Ravens' backfield, where both these guys are just touchdown dependent flexes. And 
I guess Edwards is a little bit more likely to get in the end zone than Justice Hill, but Justice Hill is going to get more receiving work, so it just kind of cancels out, and I don't feel great about either of these guys, Matthew. That's right. I mean, like, in weeks in which Gus, Gus Edwards scores, he's going to have the better fantasy day. In weeks when they don't, Hill will because he'll be more involved in the passing attack, right? 54% snap rate in week two, 52% of the running back carries. He did see all three running back targets. What a 9% target share again. It's, it's ideally it's a situation to avoid again. It's just sort of if you're desperate here, right? And so um, uh, it just kind of depends on your team need. But similar to the Giants and the, uh, the, uh, the Ravens, I feel the same way. If you're desperate for a guy, okay then. But ideally, you're looking elsewhere. I think, again, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, Zay Flowers, the only Ravens I feel confident in moving forward. Yep. This next one, if you have a roster spot just laying around, I would get ahead on this one, and that's Roshan Johnson for the Bears, yeah. the rookie running back who's available in 62% of leagues. They got the Chiefs, Broncos, your commanders on Thursday night football, Barry, and then the Vikings. He only had four carries for 32 yards and two catches for 10 yards in week two, but it feels like we're slowly starting to swing towards Roshan Johnson being a big part of this offense. Deontay Foreman was a healthy scratch. Right. So, I mean, he's already moved up the depth chart now, so it's him and Khalil Herbert, and – you know, a lot of the times where, like, so we're going to talk about Tajay Spears in a second, right? Um, and Tajay Spears, like, we like Tajay Spears. He's already, he's getting some work. But Tajay Spears' path to being super fantasy relevant, being a top 20 guy, is only through an injury to Derrick Henry. As long as Derrick Henry is healthy, Tajay Spears' upside is limited. And that's the case with a lot of these guys, right, in terms of, in, in terms of their path to fantasy significance. But with Roshan Johnson, it could be an injury to Khalil Herbert. It could just be... He becomes better, yeah, especially, right. by the way, the team looks awful. They're 0-2. They've got to do something. And so Roshan Johnson, who is somebody that they drafted this year, like you could see them just trying to go with a youth movement, not that Khalil Herbert's that old. But, you know, like I just um, – there's different paths to Roshan Johnson being a very viable fantasy option. So I know you like the talent. We I like do. him a lot. Yeah. I think that – if he played at any other college behind any, you know. With, that's the story. Right. He's I mean, behind B. John Robinson. He's behind B. John Robinson. Like, there's, right, there's no shame in, like, you know. Uh, again, if you're on a different show and I'm not here, people, people are talking about, about Connor Rogers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're excited. Right? Right. Exactly. That's a great, that's yeah. a great comparison. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But you're I'm not, buried like, on the depth chart. Exactly. So exactly. I'll take my three exactly. catches and seven carries for <laughs> 19 <laughs> right. yards, and I'll, I'm fine. That's a thousand percent. Yeah. Braxton Berrios over here. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, wow. That's a savage comparison. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. Well, I like it, SNY. <laughs> Okay, Roshan Johnson, I agree, has upside. I do think I'm stealing from your man Dwayne McFarlane here, yeah. Matthew, but he tweeted out that the real beneficiary of Deontay Foreman being inactive was Khalil Herbert, who saw his stats go up from 36% to 59%. Yeah. He is a guy that I would target trading for, particularly so I don't think they want to make Justin Fields throw uh, no, as no much interest because that. Uh, that hasn't been a good thing so far. No, it is not. Very brought up Tajay Spears. He's available in 83% of the leagues because, like you said, he plays behind Derrick Henry, but credit to Tajay Spears, he does play more than I think anybody expected. Yeah. He had eight carries, 49 yards, two catches for six yards. Obviously, not somebody that you're looking to get significant impact from, but he is an interesting name in this Tennessee offense right now. He, he, you mentioned the 45% of snaps. He's actually averaging 6.9 yards per carry. And now they play the Browns this week. They're at Cleveland. That's a tough matchup here. But still, like, that is somebody that, like, that's the ultimate. Like, he's a super deep league play if you're desperate, especially once we start getting into the bye weeks. But for now, he's just like, Really interesting stash. It's, but he, he should be 100% rostered because Derrick Henry is 100% rostered. And I, I think we've seen enough from Tajay Spears that if anything were to happen to Henry, Spears would immediately be a top 10 fantasy running back. And the fact that he's getting this many snaps this early into his NFL career, I think is promising. Yep. And also, Derrick Henry, I think, <clears> is <throat> the biggest injury risk in the league just because he gets more carries than anyone else and has more opportunity to get injured in what uh, yeah. is obviously uh, a, a position um, that, you know, it leads to injuries a lot. So I think that Spears, for that reason, uh, yeah, is must roster. Should we look at the – let's look yeah. at the now, – now, we just gave you a bunch of running back names here. Why don't we – if you can throw up the uh, full screen here in terms of here's the order in which I would pick them up. You've got Jerome Ford, one, Zach Moss, two, Jalen Warren, who we talked about a little bit in the game recap. Again, he's averaging almost six yards per touch through two weeks. Last week, uh, last night, 20% target share. Uh, Roshan Johnson at four, Justice Hill at five, Brita and Brightwell at six, and then Tajay Spears. But again, like, it depends on what you need. Like, if you're set for this week, Tajay Spears over 
either of the Giants guys. Like, yep. it, it just depends. Like, do I need to start this guy anytime soon, or am I just looking to fortify my bench for some upside depth? So, if you need guys this week, then Justice Hill, the Giants guys, they'll, you know, obviously Ford and Moss are, you know, a, a, a far and away the guys. And then if you need somebody else, you can get down there. But if you're just like, hey, for upside after Ford and Moss, Jalen Warren, Rashawn Johnson, uh, and Ty Shea Spears. So it sort of depends on kind of your team needs. Absolutely. That takes us to wide receivers and a little bit of a surprise as we start with the Texans here. Nico Collins still available in 38% of so, leagues. A surprise to some people. Not to me. It's true. Oh, you did say. Yeah. Did you, 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 you guys you destroyed did, me on air for drafting Nico Collins on my bench? In I, the don't fantasy this at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember this Absolutely. So. He's number four uh, wide receiver by PFF grade right now. I have no right recollection now. of this. I have no recollection of, of this at all. Um, why don't we just play the tape of me uh, <laughs> recommending Nico Collins on Sunday yeah. and Tank and Dell. And Tank Dell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we can run the Puka one back. Yeah, yeah exactly. And the, and the Puka one. Again, some the, people. The big thing with Nico Collins, yeah, so sir. went nine targets, seven of one, 46 and a touchdown. CJ Stroud is good, or at least good enough that he can mm. provide fantasy value, and he was airing it out. He had an average depth of target over nine yards, uh, completion percentage over expected that was positive. I think that he is. Certainly in a way that Bryce Young in that offense is not at the moment. He can support fancy wide receivers, and Nico Collins is top of that list. Yeah, I mean, he's only available in about 38% of Yahoo League, so he doesn't actually make our list because it's uh, we use a 50% available threshold. But uh, but certainly worth checking to see. If Nico Collins is available, if you're in one of the 38% of leagues that Nico Collins is available in, he would be my number one pick at the wide receiver. I don't think I trashed you for oh, draft. I, I, I think I made crushed. fun of your entire team. And I think like Nico Collins was like your number one wide receiver. He at, like, no. it, yeah. Yeah, you go to Stray. He was lumped in with the yeah. Dalton Schultz and some yeah. other guys <laughs> yes. on my bench. That's right. It was out, a whole so. bit on the Texans. Hasn't worked offense. out great for Dalton Schultz. That's, yeah. I think that's yeah. what it was. Is that, right, you had Dalton Schultz and um, some Deion uh, Jackson and, and there. Darnell Mooney. And, right. No, you but you had Nico. You had you had three Texans and none of them were Damian Pierce when you dropped it. Was like was it? Oh, Stroud. You had Stroud. Hey, I'd rather have Nico Collins than Damian Pierce right now. I mean, no question about that. Yeah, it's not that one's. That was a call that I made that um, we don't need to bring up. So his teammate uh, in Robert Woods does yes. meet that threshold. Robert Woods available in 91% of leagues in week two, targeted nine times, six catches for 74 yards. So it goes back to your point, Jay, that Stroud is supporting multiple receivers in this offense to be fantasy relevant. Yeah, look, this team is a mess. They're going to be eight, nine point underdogs almost every week, and they're going to be yeah. throwing a lot. And so long as C.J. Stroud can stay alive behind that offensive line, they will get some linemen back, I think, week five uh, after some guys get off IR like Titus Howard. But uh, I do think that he will be able to support multiple receivers in this passing game. He's got a 22% target share this season, second on the team, Bobby Trees. But I'll just say, as long as we're talking the Texans, I prefer Tank Dell yeah. uh, to Robert Woods. I, I get it. Six receptions in both games this season, nine targets in both games this season, at least, uh, for, for Bobby Trees. But Tank Dell, 10 targets in week number two, 78% of snaps, which was up from 45 in week number one. He's young. He's best friends with C.J. Stroud. He's the future in Houston, not Robert Woods. And so I'd rather bet on the upside and the excitement of Tank Dell than sort of like Robert Woods is just kind of like, he's Adam Thielen in a different uniform. Is this kind of right? I mean, am I wrong? No. no like, no, is this kind of like, okay. Yeah, he's a veteran strange. wide receiver who will get, you know, a handful of targets. But, like, if you're telling me somebody on the Texans has 100 yards and two touchdowns on Sunday – like, it's a long time before I get to Robert Woods being that guy. Like, I think it would be Nico Collins, and then I would pick Tank Dell, and then, you know. Yeah, it's like a poor man's version of Brandon Cooks last year on this time. Yeah, and so anyway, I prefer Tank Dell to Robert Woods, but it does seem like all three have value. To your point, they're going to be down and throwing quite a bit this yep. year. Due to the Puka Nakua breakout, it's kind of overshadowed Tutu Atwell yeah. having a nice season for the Rams now. He's available in 75% of leagues, and he built off a good week one with a solid week two against the 49ers where he was targeted nine times, seven catches, 77 yards, and Barry, he's out there to be had in most leagues. So far this year, a 19% target share, which is second on the team. He actually leads the Rams in routes run, 94% snap rate in week number two until Cooper Cup comes back. So we've got at least two weeks, and who knows if it's longer. But Tutu Atwell is is that guy. The Rams' offense is unbelievable. I mean, Stafford's like it's good. Stafford's Stafford, back, right? Stafford yeah. Stafford's back. We know it's a talented play caller. And what's great what's great about the Rams, in addition to the fact that just they're moving the ball, they're looking effective, that Stafford looks healthy, is that it's all fairly narrow, right? Yeah. I mean, unlike the Ravens, the Chiefs, which are good offenses, but like it's all over the place. Like it's it's Puka, it's Tutu, it's Kyron. 
Yep. Like it's it's three guys on that team that are touching the, all the balls, and uh, so I think that's helpful. I agree. Uh, Tutu Atwell is somebody that needs to be rostered a lot more than. 25% of leagues. I do think once Cup comes back that Nakua is going to be a lot more resilient uh, in terms of targets. So uh, Tutu's got uh, two, two weeks left uh, of being viable. God bless you. Yeah, we'll keep that one moving. All right. So as Jameson Williams <laughs> serves his six-game suspension. Two shows on Sunday. Try the that's right. Flies, tip, tip your waitresses. That's right. Uh, the Lions looking for wide receiver help from people not named Amon Ross St. Brown mm. and Josh Reynolds yeah. has started to fill that bill. Six targets, five catches, 66 yards, and most importantly here, Jay, two touchdowns from Josh Reynolds against Seattle. Yeah, until Jamison Williams comes back, Josh Reynolds I think is going to be a thing. He's going to be viable. Just that offensive line is so good particularly when they're playing at home. Goff is in a real rhythm uh, at the moment. And, yeah, outside of uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, I mean, he's kind of the guy. 20% target share so far this year. He's had at least 12 fantasy points in both games this year. And look at their schedule, guys. Falcons, not scared about that. At Green Bay, that's the Thursday night game. You're not scared about that. Home to Carolina at Tampa Bay. Like, there's not a defense there that, like, oh, well, I can't start Josh Reynolds against those guys. Like, again, I think, he, I think he's viable. Giga Maggies. All right, you brought up Adam Thielen before. Basically, just called him Robert Woods uh, in a different uniform or the other way around. Yeah. But Adam Thielen available in 61% of leagues. Seven catches, 54 yards, and a touchdown against the Saints on Monday Night Football. And we just talked about how Josh Reynolds went off against Seattle. Adam Thielen this week, Barry, plays against Seattle. Yeah, I mean, Seattle, Minnesota, Detroit, Miami. That's a All nice... teams in which they should be throwing quite a bit. And it does feel like, you know, uh, Bryce Young, what's he doing? He He's thrown to his tight end, Hayden Hurst. He's thrown to this possession receiver and Adam Thielen. He's dumping off to the running backs. It's a very conservative offense for a, for a quarterback that's kind of under siege, and that's what you feel like, especially with DJ Shark. Can't get healthy. And you mentioned Jonathan Mingo, but still a rookie. So yep. I don't think it lasts all year long, but, like, if you need a guy that will get you volume, cheap volume, Adam Thielen is a guy who will get you cheap volume. Yep. I'm not super excited about it, but he does qualify at wide receiver. How about a couple emerging rookie wide receivers? Yeah. If you're looking to stash someone, Tank Dell, who you've loved, Barry, is available in 95% of leagues. Yeah. Jaden Reed has been playing a ton for the Packers, available in 90% of leagues. Marvin Mims, who caught the touchdown on the deep play, is available in 77% of leagues. And then Jalen Hyatt, available in 88% of leagues. So another guy, deep ball guy, 89 yards on two catches in week two. Other than maybe Tank Dell and Jaden Reed, we'll see about Christian Watson. The other two guys, Mims and Hyatt, really like their talent quite a bit, but just it's worth noting that Mims, even though the, the box score is flashy, he ran only six routes. Yeah. He literally ran six routes. Now, maybe his performance earns him more playing time. Russell Wilson is throwing the deep ball well, uh, and Hyatt, you know, it's only gotten three targets this entire year. But with Saquon Barkley out, maybe they do need to get to the passing game more often. But those are two guys that we just think talent-wise should be rostered in more leagues. So like we did for running backs, here's a recap in order of Barry's top wide receiver waiver targets going into week three. Yeah, again, if Nico Collins is available in your league, he would be my number one target. But assuming Nico Collins is gone, then it goes 2-2 Atwell, Tank Dell, Jaden Reed, Josh Reynolds, Adam Thielen, and Robert Woods. Three Texans wide receivers. <laughs> Man, how the Welcome jokes. to my world. Yeah. Welcome to Jay's team. Boy, how are you doing in our league, by the way? I'm one and one. I'm All right. Yeah, yeah, there you I'm go. Okay. Yeah, you, know who, you know who's 2-0 and oh and has two thumbs? Is it Connor Rogers? And me. Okay. Both of us. I was going to be, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Oh, one loss Rod between the table. That's yeah, great. Yeah, that's right. That's really good. Mine, There's only right. one loss at the table, and that's you. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. One and one. I'll make my charge. That's all right. Behind but if, if we were able to somehow flip the camera and go behind the camera, we'd see Penn State Blake, who has zero wins. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, yeah. yeah. It's just a matter of time, Blake. You no almost made it. That. You almost made it to one o'clock. <laughs> Not today. Sure. All right. Quarterbacks quickly here, Barry. Poor Penn State Blake. Yeah, get a shot of him. Look, we got the camera on him right now. Wave to the crowd. Say hello to Blake. There he is. Larry is the legend Blake. himself. There you go. In the darkness with his two yes, losses. Yes, very, two losses. Yeah. <laughs> he will rise again, though. Oh, look, there's another don't, loss. Don't yeah. mistake it. Oh, my goodness. Ruthless. An underrated, Ruthless. Under, underrated line right Listen, there. Listen, just go, like on. Nico Collins and the wide receivers, a quick mention of Jordan Love. He's only available in 39% of leagues, Barry, but if he is out there, he is a quarterback streamer uh, for those in need. More interesting, though, is Matthew Stafford, available in 65% of leagues. 300 passing yards in both games, 93 passing attempts through two weeks. That's second in the NFL. They're just chucking it all That's over the place. Do. I mean, again, he looks healthy. And my guy Sam Howell, right, future Hall of Famer, 
He's he's had 13, three career starts. He's averaging over 18 fantasy points per game. Make fun of me for being a homer all the want, but the product, production is there. And again, I'm not ready to throw in the towel on Kenny Pickett yet. Not with Las Vegas up next. They allow touchdown passes at the second highest rate this season, the Raiders do. So Kenny Pickett hopefully gets off the schneid this week as well. But yeah, uh, Jordan Love, Matthew Stafford, Sam Howell, and Kenny Pickett are my quarterback choices this week. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL, and today, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the app and use promo code BERRY when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. The crown is yours. The crown That's is right. ours. But, but by the way, you only get the crown if you use the promo code BERRY. That's what Otherwise, the crown is not yours. Otherwise the crown is somebody else's. That's right. right. The crown is somebody else's who used the promo code BERRY. All right, a little back to the future. Some of yeah. our favorite futures we're keeping an eye on. Jay, of course, we start with you because you are a man that just lives in futures betting. What do you got for us today? Yeah, yeah this is my world. Micah Parsons, 50 to 1 to win MVP, not Defensive Player of the Year, MVP to be the first defensive player to do it since Lawrence Taylor. I think Micah Parsons is the best defensive player since Lawrence Taylor. He is out of his mind right now. He wrecked your Jets on the weekend, That's our good. Jets. Uh, he completely yeah. destroyed that game. I think he is playing at a level where if the quarterback class is underwhelming, which at the moment it kind of is, then I think that he could be rewarded for if he gets... 20 plus sacks comes close to breaking the sack record or does it cowboys best record i think the parsons could get the respect and actually win the award and what i know for sure is that he's the cowboys mvp candidate not dak prescott yeah. people are not going to vote for dak prescott because everyone thinks parsons is better at football than him so 50 to 1 i think he can win mvp Still plus 440 to win defensive player of the year no, that's, so. yeah. Yeah, that so, should be half that price. Yeah, yeah exactly. we'll see where that one goes. Barry, what do you got for us? Well, all right, you guys are going to call me a homer, but you know what? Screw it because I am. But I'm just going to say this. Ron Rivera is plus 3,500 to win coach of the year. Their preseason win total was six. Everyone thought this team was left for dead. He's a lame duck coach with one year with a rookie quarterback in a, in a very tough division. I mean, a, a division with, you know, the, the NFC champs and the Cowboys who look awesome and the Giants who are a playoff team. And they were left for dead, and now all of a sudden they're 2-0. and They're 2-0, and and I think if the Commanders get into the playoffs, having to go through the gauntlet of the Eagles twice and the Giants twice and the, and the Cowboys twice, Ron Rare is somebody that the media really likes. Like, he's, a, he's won a Coach of the Year award before in Carolina. So he's somebody that's very friendly. It's a good narrative. Exactly, Dan Snyder's out. He had to deal with all of this. He brings them to the playoffs in a very tough division with a, you know, in essence, a rookie quarterback. I know it's his second year, but a very inexperienced quarterback against Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott and Daniel. You know what I mean? Like, I just, 35 to 1. Yep. Yeah. I like it because Coach of the Year is so much about being able to uh, assign credit to a coach over a quarterback and not have Patrick Mahomes stealing credit or Josh Allen. Like, Ron Rivera will get the credit for that team. Sam Howell will not steal the credit. And also, the Commanders are 18-1 to 1 to win the NFC East, and Ron Rivera is 35-1 to 1 to win Coach of the Year. That doesn't reconcile. If they win the division, then he's winning Coach of the Year, and I don't think he needs to win the division to win that I award. think if he just gets in the playoffs. I think if he gets in the playoffs, I think he's, he's right there in the mix. Again, their preseason win total was six, yep. and they're already a third of the way there. Did that math in my head. Don't want to brag, but <laughs> literally just right here. Didn't have to, act, you know, didn't have to calculate uh, yeah, two, it. Two to six. Like yep, yep. No, you're right. The Guys, third of the way there. The excitement around Puka Nakua is an absolute rocket ship right now, where he is plus 800 to win Offensive Rookie of the sure, Year. Sure, a, sure. A gigantic rise from Puka Nakua, and I'm telling you. To use that to your advantage, you could still make a lot of money off betting on Bijan Robinson to win this award. <laughs> Bijan Robinson plus 175. You're crazy and didn't take it when it opened around plus 400. Yeah. You still have time. Plus 175. Give it two weeks. This will be minus money. Bijan, I already think, is the best running back in the NFL, and he's on his way to showing that. Yep. Just as a general rule, when you're the third favorite to win the rushing title among all players in the NFL, you probably shouldn't be plus money to win uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year. He's also, again... These are all media awards, yeah. so that's just something to take in, in mind. Like, again, I've interviewed B. John Robinson. He's awesome. Yeah. He's like, you, you don't interview B. John Robinson and come away from that thinking anything other than, like, that guy's awesome. Like, super personable, uh, you know, really charming. And I think that you've already seen some positive glowing media reports from it. And I think as, you know, his campaign continues, that kind of stuff, I do think the media will, like, he's an easy kid to root for, I guess is my point. Yep. And also just... Everyone thinks he's the best rookie right now because yeah. he's got the pedigree, and that matters because everyone thinks Parsons is the best defensive player. Everyone thinks Mahomes is the best quarterback. Those guys are the incumbents. Someone has to take 
the crown from them to win these awards. So Bijan's going to take some beating to lose this. Our friends at DraftKings love the fact that you just worked a crown into that. Well it's done intentional. right there. Uh, you are a company man. I'll just, uh, I'll also say, say this. As no one loves Puka Nakua more than me. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, maybe there's a few people, but whatever. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm all in on right. Puka, right? I'm all, may, yeah. maybe his mom. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. his mom. Uh. It's close, me and Mama Nakua. But uh, what I will say is, is that once Cooper Cup comes back, we expect the production to somewhat come down. And so I just think Bijan Robinson, because of the way, not only because of his talent, but also because of the way that offense runs, He's going to get every opportunity to prove it. Like, we're already seeing him distance himself from Tyler Algier, you know, in, uh, in last week. So, yeah, Those like are our call. futures. For all of yours, of course, go to DraftKings Sportsbook. As promised, the tight end waiver wire targets here, Barry, led by Zach Ertz in this group. He leads all targets with tight ends. Uh, he's got 18 through two weeks as well. He's averaging over 12 fantasy points per game in his 11 full games with the Cardinals since the start of last season. Jake Ferguson has become a thing for the Cowboys. He leads all tight ends with seven red zone targets. By the way, check to see if Hunter Henry's available in your league. He's 44% available. He'd be my number one choice there. Luke Musgrave and then Taysom Hill, who should get more rushing with Jamal Williams banged up. Jay, for the maniacs that need a defense, help him out here. Yep, a couple of streaming options uh, this week. The Chiefs' defense with Chris Jones back. Play the Chicago Bears, who are just completely broken on yep. offense at the moment. And then uh, the Jags, perhaps the return of Saxonville uh, against the Texans, who are missing 80% of their starting offensive line. CJ Stroud has taken 11 sacks the first two weeks. So I think the Jags against the Texans are uh, as hefty favorites are viable as well. Of I think course, both those goods. Go ahead. We've spent a lot of time today talking about who you need to pick up, but you need to drop someone when yep. you pick someone up. So let's take a look, Barry, at some droppable players that are owned in over 50% of leagues right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, Antonio Gibson just can't get on the field. Same with Juju or, or Zeke. Rashad Bateman. It's just not happening for uh, Rashad Bateman, unfortunately. Uh, and then Jarek McKinnon. It just, Pacheco's the only chief running back you can trust. So those are some guys there, but obviously figure out your own team needs and um, uh, look at uh, players that you can drop here. One last thing for me, Ryan Dunleavy, who covers the Giants for the New York Post, tweeting this out. Whoa, Giants, Brian Dayball wouldn't rule out Saquon Barkley versus the Niners. Quote, he feels a lot better today, says he's, quote, a quick healer, expects to be a game time decision. Just avoid the Giants this week. That's my thing. <laughs> All right, listen, water. it's closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here for Jay and Connor. I'm Matthew Berry. We will see you tomorrow. Good luck on waivers tonight. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.